Hello and welcome to the OWC instructional series of videos. In this installment, we will show you how to upgrade or replace the hard drive in a Mac Mini server. Make sure to watch the video all the way through before attempting this upgrade. As you will see, getting into the Mini is a difficult procedure and professional installation is recommended. See the end of this video for more information. We have gathered the materials listed at the beginning of this video and are working on a soft, static-free workspace. We are now ready to begin. To get inside the Mini, we will need to flip it over. We will need to loosen the clips holding the top cover on. To do this, you will need a small putty knife. Carefully insert the blade of the putty knife between the inner and the outer case. Then, gently but firmly pry out with the knife which will cause the inner clips to detach. You will hear a series of pops as the clips come free. Carefully work your way around the mini's edges. Once you get to the rear of the mini, the case should be separated enough that you can lift the cover up and off with a minimum of effort. Inside, there are three antennas that need to be removed. The large antenna on the right has a small clip underneath which you will need to squeeze to release. Set the spring aside so you don't lose it. You will also want to make sure to loosen the tape holding the antenna's cable to the case. Then, arrange the antenna so that it is out of the way, being careful not to disconnect the cable. The other two antennas simply lift up and out. These also have springs that you should set aside. The antenna in the front right corner also has a piece of tape holding the cable to the case, which should also be removed. Next, we need to disconnect the SATA ribbon connector. The easiest way to detach it is at this point. Simply use your nylon pry tool to gently lift it and it will disconnect easily. There are four screws you will need to remove to detach the drive assembly from the base. The front left screw is located here. The rear left screw is located here. The right rear screw can be found here. The right front screw is larger than the others and can be found here. Once you've removed these four screws, you can gently lift the drive assembly up and away from the base. It may take a little maneuvering to get the assembly clear. To continue, you will need to remove the top drive tray from the assembly. There are a total of six screws you need to remove. The first two are along the outside edge of the tray. The second pair are along the opposite side of the tray. The final pair is along the back edge holding the tray to the SATA connector. Once the screws have been removed, you should be able to slide the tray forward and off.
To detach the hard drive from the tray, remove the four screws on the bottom that hold it in place. To remove the bottom hard drive, you must first remove the heat sensor. This is located near the outside front corner of the drive. Use your nylon pry tool to detach it. You will also need to detach the piece of tape holding the cable to the drive. There are four screws holding the drive in place. The first two are located here. The other two are located here. Once the screws are removed, simply slide the drive forward to detach it from the SATA connector. Then, remove the drive from the assembly. On the bottom drive, there are two foam pads. Gently peel these from the drive and set them aside. With one of your new drives oriented with the SATA connector facing away from you, place the two foam pads on the top left and bottom left corners. There should be enough residual adhesive to allow them to stick. Place this drive in the bottom tray. Attach the SATA connector, then use the four screws to secure it in place. Press the heat sensor back into place, then tape the cable down. Place your other hard drive into the top tray so that the SATA connector is toward the rear edge. There are guides to help make sure it is aligned correctly. Turn the assembly over and attach the hard drive with the four screws you removed earlier. Slide the top tray into place and attach the SATA connector. Then, replace the six screws you removed earlier. Replace the drive assembly, being careful not to pinch the antenna cables. You will be able to feel the assembly connector slide into place when it is properly aligned. Once the assembly is in place, reattach the four screws you removed earlier. Remember, the larger screw goes in the front right corner. Place the springs on the antenna posts, then attach the antennas themselves by pushing them into place. Don't forget to replace the tape on any cables that had it before. In order to replace the large antenna on the right, you may need to squeeze the clip you used to remove it. Finally, reattach the SATA ribbon cable by simply lining up the connector and gently pushing it in. Once that's done, you may replace the top cover and push down evenly all around the edges until it clips flush back into place.